Some time ago, I recorded a tutorial on implementing detailless view in editor utility widgets, and we ended up with something like here. It's a widget that describes a given actor or an asset. But sometimes we want something similar, but way simpler. We just want to be able to pick a single mesh, texture, color, number, whatever you name it, but we don't need to see a whole list of properties of an asset or actor. And what's more, sometimes there is no asset or actor. We just want to pick color or maybe float value, some number, and that's when we can use a so-called single property view. It's just a single widget, and here on the screen I used three just to demonstrate that it supports working with meshes, working with textures, or even picking colors and more. We are going to implement it in just a few steps, so stay with me. I prepared a single property view folder for the tutorial, and I'm going to start from scratch. Right mouse button and go to Editor Utilities. Let's pick Editor Utility Widget and we can start right with the stack box. Let's call it EUW YouTube Tech Art Corner Single Prop View. And I just realized it's a terribly long name. <laughs> Doesn't have to be that long in your case. Um, let's open it and let's talk this editor. I'm going to begin with just a single property, okay? And then you might want to add some more. So let's navigate to palette on the left side and search for single property view. And we are looking for single property view that is in editor tab. The one that is user created is just the demo you have seen. So let's drag and drop it, and it says it's an undefined object, and that's fine. This widget works in such a way that first we set object, and in this object, it's going to look for the property. Then we tell it the name of the property, and it will figure a way on how to display it. And in our case, our widget will have the property, and that property can be whatever you want. Texture, mesh, text, number, whatever. So right now, we haven't implemented any logic that would set the object, and that's why it says it's undefined. And to fix it, we have to select it either here in the viewport or in hierarchy view. And in the details panel, just enable is variable. What it made is that now in the graph editor, we can see it as a variable. So let's drag this variable to our graph view, and we can execute set object. And the object that holds the property will be our widget. But we are already in the widget graph, right? So if you want to get reference to where you are currently, you get a so-called reference to self. So you can search for it and there will be node get reference to self and connect it. The next step is to set the property name. So we can either drag and create a node from here or just copy it so everything is clear and there's less spaghetti. And here, add set property name. And here we have to set actual property that belongs to object we have set earlier. And currently we don't have such thing. So we have to create the variable. Let's add a new variable and I'm going to create a mesh property. So let's call it example mesh and the type is going to be static mesh, and it is an object reference. And unfortunately, we can't drag and drop it. We have to go with this example mesh name here. That's the bad news. You could figure out some way of getting name of this property using nodes. Mm, 
but I'm not going into that because most of the things you will see here are going to be related to the mesh. And if it was the texture, most of the things will be related to the underlying texture. So I want to keep this tutorial simple. The bad thing about this approach is that if I decide to rename this variable, I will also have to manually rename it in the node. And that's really bad because if you have a lot of those properties and you are renaming them, it's very easy to skip something. So make sure that you test this stuff. So let's connect the execution flow because that's the only thing that is missing. And we are going to execute it during event pre-construct. That means it is executing before this widget is created. And thanks to that, when we compile, even the designer will be able to create some preview widget. But if you are creating or initializing those things in the runtime, maybe after pressing some button, you may expect the designer to still show undefined object, and you will have to run the widget to see that it works. So we have this example mesh, and as you can see, it takes the name from the property. So we could rename it to mesh property. And of course, make sure to update the name in the node. And when we are back in the designer and we compile, the name will refresh. Keep that in mind. That may be important for your users. So now let's add another property view. Let's drag and drop it. And it doesn't look. Oh, OK, it didn't drop. Now it dropped, but it doesn't look right. Um, maybe we should replace the stack box with a vertical one. So let's select the stack box, right mouse button, and we can replace it with a vertical box. Now it is way, way better. So get back to work. Select this single property view and enable is a variable. Go back to the graph. And now we could create a similar setup. Let's drag the single property view onto the graph. Let's do it twice. Let's set object. I'm going to copy the self-reference. That's useful. I could also copy the set property name, but who cares? I can just find it here. Connect everything. Make sure everything is executing. And now let's try some other kind of property. I'm going to go with color, but I really encourage you to go crazy with something else. So I will call color property. Yeah, that's it. And mm, let's say color. Is it going to find something? It actually did find the color struct. And it says it uh, stores 8-bit uh, color. That's great. And we can use it in the node, compile. And when we are back to the designer, it does show some color property. But if it didn't work, you could try something else, maybe a vector 3 or vector 4, because you can use those 3 or 4 numbers also to represent color values. When we run our utility widget. We can browse for assets. We can even search. We have the color picker. And I really think it was quite effortless. So that's almost it. But I encourage you to check out the things that are here on the right side, because you can set some tooltip, or you can even run on property change event that will just return your property name, and you can print some string, compile, run, and then when we execute it and change it, we'll see some hello on the screen. Maybe it would be nicer if we were printing, oh, 
if we are pre were printing it this way, I have no idea why it connected not so properly. But now we can see we are editing color property. And that's amazing. So if you watched the previous video, now you know how to work with both details view and single property view. If you haven't, I really encourage you to do so. You can also subscribe to be notified about future tutorials. And if you go down to the description, you will notice that I have write-ups both on single property view and on details view available for free to anyone who visits my Medium blog. And that's it. See you.